And now for AFX uh, commodities update, uh, volume and value traded on the AFX uh, commodities market in the week of May 4th and uh, till, till 10th uh, were up 86% and 71.31% uh, apiece. However, while AFX commodities index went up 0.48%, uh, the export index was flat. Uh, for details, now let's uh, talk to Michael Martin, portfolio manager at AFX. Hello, Michael. Hi, Ladi. Good morning. Thank you. Good for morning. Me Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Well, uh, run us through the week's activities. Thank you, Ladi. Um, so, for over the course of the week on the commodities exchange, uh, we saw the total value of transactions traded on the exchange uh, go up by 71.31% from around 1.22 billion naira uh, to close the trading week at 2.09 billion naira. Uh, the total number of contracts traded on the exchange also went up by 86.06% from around 70,332 contracts uh, to close the week at 130,858 uh, contracts. Uh, the total number of deals, however, fell by 31.34% from around 35 deals uh, to 24 deals. Uh, we also saw a bit of green on the AFEX Commodities Index, which went up by 0.48% from 381.89 points to 300. 83.74 points. Uh, the AFEX export index, which is the AEI, however, remained flat in the week on the review, staying at 146.57 points. As regards the volume of contracts traded on the exchange in the week on the consideration, we only saw significant market activity uh, for maize as a commodity going up from 70,001 contracts to close the week at 130,843 contracts. Um, the only other commodity that traded up ever so slightly was soybean, which went from zero contracts in the previous week to 15 contracts in the week under consideration. Every other commodity traded little to no volume in the week um, under consideration. As regards price, we only saw movement in two major commodities. And for the top gainer, we saw a 1.05% gain in the, in the contract price of maize, gaining 200 naira to close the trading week at 19,200 naira uh, per contract. And the Top and only loser for commodities in the week under consideration was soybean, which fell by 0.38%, uh, losing 115 naira in the contract value to close the trading week at 30,635 naira per contract. All other commodities from paddy rice, sorghum, ginger, cocoa, sesame, and cashew all remained unchanged in the week on the review. And lastly, we have the fair trade um, exchange traded commodity, which still, of course, remained unchanged in the week on the review, remaining at 14,008 naira per contract and as we always say if you want to know more about commodities you can go to our website which is www.afxnigeria.com and if you want to get started trading commodities you can download our comex app on android and ios all right marco uh we are currently in the ramadan period what are the effects of the ramadan period on commodity prices um, so some of the effects of the Ramadan period can be very flat. Um, so on the exchange, we haven't seen any sort of significant market activity, as you would expect. Uh, so for the Ramadan period, you tend to see activity for, uh, with paddy rice as a commodity on the exchange. But this year, we haven't seen that many activity on the, on the exchange with regards to paddy rice. So yes, you can sort of reasonably estimate that this year's Ramadan hasn't had any sort of significant uh, effect on the price of uh, commodities on the exchange. So yes, the effect can be flat and was flat this year. All right, uh, what are some of the wet uh, season input disbursements and its uh, effects on uh, commodity prices? Um, okay, uh, so first off, um, so for some people that don't know what the wet season impute disbursement is, and that's usually the time period where we are distributing fertilizers, herbicides, and all other uh, imputes to small other farmers to allow them um, to, uh, to use when they, when they want to start cultivating. And so some of the effects that we have seen play out in recent time, and maybe also this year, is that that tends to have an, a deflationary effect on uh, commodity prices. And so what very often, or what, one of the uh, phenomena that we've uh, one of the phenomena that we sort of uh, observed in the commodities market is we've seen small older farmers uh, in a bid to buy the imputes uh, that we are distributing, right? They would essentially go and sell off the excess volume that they have cultivated in a bid to make up for the, uh, for the commercial value of the imputes that they actually want to buy. So we see them selling off that volume and then coming to buy those imputes and then coming to buy those imputes. So yes, wet, impute, this, uh, wet season impute disbursement can have uh, a deflationary effect on commodities prices. Yeah, so let's look at storage. You guys often talk about storage as a service.
What does that mean for the participants mm -hmm. on the value chain? Um, so one of the major challenges that has bedeviled the agricultural value chain and maybe the commodities uh, ecosystem in general is the availability of storage facilities, right? And this sort of affects every single player within the agricultural value chain. Uh, for us at Apex Commodities Exchange, uh, we have more than 70 warehouses with a storage capacity of more than 150,000 uh, metric ton. And what that means for us as an exchange is that we can leverage that storage infrastructure to provide storage itself, right, as a service to every single player in the agricultural value chain, whether that's in terms of the small older farmer who doesn't want to sell off his entire volume and then brings that volume to our warehouse to store and keep, or whether that's also in terms of the processor who doesn't have the enough storage capacity to store the entire volume that he would need for the entire year, he can also store uh, it can also store that volume to, uh, with us as an exchange. So for us as an exchange, we currently have the storage infrastructure whereby we can guarantee to a, to a reasonable extent the quality, quantity of commodities that are stored at our warehouses because, of course, they are stored in a quality-controlled environment. And, of course, that allows us to also facilitate transactions between the sellers of commodities, which are the small older farmers, and also the buyers of commodities, which are expected to be the this is what it means to us uh, as, as, as an exchange uh, in being able to provide storage as a service uh, to players in the agricultural value chain. All right, Michael, but what benefits do producers gain with regards to having this uh, storage as a service and how does this curb uh, food wastage? Um, so, to be honest, one of the, there, there are a lot of benefits. Uh, particularly to producers, that, that, and that would be small older farmers. There are a lot of benefits that storage uh, uh, gives to small older farmers when they come to store uh, on the exchange. So take, for example, when a, when a small older farmer cultivates a particular commodity, immediately at harvest, he's, he's immediately faced uh, with a conundrum. So the question is, do I sell off my entire, volume, uh, do I sell off my entire uh, uh, cultivation now, or do I store and wait for a particular period when I expect that the prices are going to be higher so that I, I can gain a bit of the commercial value of the commodity that I am trying to, of the commodity that I have cultivated. If he doesn't have storage uh, facilities, he has to sell off that entire volume at harvest. So let's take, for example, if maize is 100,000 metric tons at harvest, he has to sell off that entire volume at harvest and then go and sort out how he's going to survive for the rest of the, for the, rest of the year. But if he has access to, storage, uh, to a storage facility, it then becomes incumbent on him to store a particular percentage of that volume and then hope to sell it off when the prices are higher. So the major benefit to producers would be the ability to capture a portion of the true commercial value of the commodity that he has cultivated. And when you think about that in terms of food wastage or storage being able to curb food wastage, so think about just the tomato uh, value chain alone. Uh, post harvest losses account for almost 45% of the value in the tomato value chain alone, right? Um, and even for grain production in the country, some surveys have estimated that post harvest lo losses can be as high as 20 to 30 percent, right? Of some conservative estimates, we say between 5 and 20 percent, but still a significant amount, right? Last year alone, because of COVID-19 and, uh, and a bit of the structural issues that we had in the agricultural value chain, the losses were estimated to be as high as $9 billion. I mean, thank goodness that we, have, we haven't had any sort of significant macroeconomic or weather, or weather condition adversely affecting the agricultural value chain or the commodities ecosystem. Um, uh, we, would, we would essentially be in trouble as a nation. So storage as a service allowing us to curb food wastage is important for the en entire value chain, both, in terms of, for, both from a financial standpoint and also from a food security uh, standpoint as a nation. So... What are the key opportunities that Apex has made available uh, as an effective storage services? Um, so one of the things that we've been able to do as an exchange um, is the ability to uh, establish warehouse infrastructure, right, at designated locations that are close to warehouse, um, that are close to small older farmers, rather, facilitating last mile interaction with the small older farmers. And what that means is that we're able to reach out to small older farmers, regardless of where they're located, even if they are, even if they are in remote areas, right. Another thing that that allows us to do is it allows uh, it allows us to provide e-warehouse receipt financing to small older farmers who need them. Uh, lastly, it also and lastly, and this speaks to processors, anyways. Um, it allows us to provide backing for whatever commercial paper that they want to lease in terms of collateral management. So those are some of the, those, those are some of the services that we've been able to provide as an exchange to different players in the agricultural value chain. All right, talking about services, now farmers can use their stored produce as collateral to access uh, credit 
uh, through warehouse receipts. How exactly does uh, the process work? Um, okay. So when a farmer cultivates, right, um, he essentially has the ability to bring that commodity to her warehouse, right? Once he brings that commodity to the warehouse, the commodity is weighed, graded, scaled, and then, of course, the quantity and quality, uh, quality parameters of that particular deposit are measured, right? Once that happens and the commodities are stored with the exchange, the, the exchange is, issues him what is called a, 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 an e-warehouse receipt, an electronic warehouse receipt. Now, that electronic warehouse receipt is essentially uh, the equivalent of a title deed that he can then take to the bank to access, as collateral to access a loan, right? So essentially, if you're trying to borrow money from a bank and you want to use your land as collateral, you don't essentially take your, you don't essentially take your land to the bank and use that as collateral. What you take is a title deed, correct? So for us in the commodities ecosystem, the e-warehouse receipt is the equivalent of, of that title deed that the small older farmer can take to the bank or any other financial institution. And the bank recognizes that e-warehouse receipt as collateral for whatever loan, right, that he wants to access from, from, from that particular financial institution, right? And for this to work, right, there are a lot of, uh, there be, there's some frameworks that need to be in place. The first off would be the legal and, uh, and regulatory framework. Uh, the second would be the insurance framework guaranteeing the quality and quantity uh, uh, guaranteeing the quality and, and quantity of the commodities that have been deposited in the, in the warehouse. Uh, thirdly would be the financial institution uh, framework, meaning that banks and other financial institutions must recognize that e-warehouse receipt as a valid document for collateral uh, to access finance. And maybe lastly, and, and, and of course not least importantly, uh, would be the education of small older farmers um, so that they know that they have access to this kind of service and they can access loans and financing from financial institutions. So what are we likely to see in your market after this um, Ramadan holiday? I mean, I would expect the commodities market to continue in the trend that they always have. Um, so we've spoken at length about how sometimes after you have a bullish uh, period of time, you, so, you sometimes see a period of consolidation, which we have been seeing for the past couple of months and past couple of weeks. Um, and then from there on in, you'd expect prices to trend uh, con continuously upwards. So yes, expectedly, we, uh, we expect that price should, go, uh, should continue upwards in the commodities market. All right, thank you very much, uh, Michael, for your time today, and um, happy holidays. We'll take a moment now. Happy.